So the state of Tennessee just passed a bill which flips a huge middle finger to the ATF by removing the NFA's restrictions on SBRs and SBSs within the state. So let's talk about this. But real quick before we jump into this video, if you think the NFA needs to be repealed, go ahead and hit that like button and subscribe. Also wanna give a shout out to one of the main sponsors of this channel, which is USCCA. Through your membership, you get training, education, and self-defense and liability protection. So if you carry a firearm, I highly recommend you take a look into USCCA and I'll put a link to them down in the details section. Also wanna mention that my three-year anniversary on YouTube is currently coming up here in early July. One of my goals was to reach 300,000 subscribers before my three-year anniversary. So if you're not currently subscribed, please consider subscribing. That really does help the channel and help me to actually reach that goal. So I guess in the intro, in this video, we're gonna be talking about a pro second amendment bill, which was introduced into Tennessee, which seeks to make SBRs and SBSs legal at the state level without needing to go through the NFA's restrictions. The bill we're gonna be talking about in this video is HB 2509, which was introduced by Rusty Grills and is co-sponsored by Bruce Giffey and John Reagan. This bill has already passed the state house and Senate and is waiting to be signed into law by the governor. Now, why is this bill amazing and why is it an amazing effort to restore Second Amendment rights within the state of Tennessee and at the state level? Well, because this bill seeks to do something similar to what we have seen other states do, like Texas, with their suppressor freedom law. If you aren't familiar, Texas and other states have passed laws which allow residents of their states to own and possess suppressors without going through the federal restrictions as outlined in the NFA. This Tennessee bill seeks to do something similar but instead it targets the legal possession of short belled rifles and short belled shotguns. The bill itself is really short. It states that Tennessee code annotated section 39-17-1302 is amended by deleting subdivision A4 in its entirety. Then it simply goes on to state that the act will take effect on July 1st of 2022. So this year, if it was signed into law. So this bill is really short and all it does is delete one section, but in deleting just one simple section in the Tennessee law, it does a big thing. So what code is it deleting and how is it having this impact on SBRs and SBSs? Well, under Tennessee code section 3917-1302A4, a person commits an offense if they intentionally or knowingly possess, manufacture, transport, repair, or sell a short barreled rifle or shotgun. Now under the current Tennessee law and code, there is an exemption that if a person acquires or possesses a weapon of this type in full compliance with the requirements of the NFA, then it is still legal. So the general law says that it's illegal to possess these types of rifles, short barrel rifles and shotguns, but then it has that exemption language that says, yes, you can possess them as long as you comply with the NFA. Well, this bill seeks to completely delete section A4 from the Tennessee law, making it so that a person could legally possess, manufacture, transport, repair, or sell an SBR or SBS without meeting the NFA's requirements. As most of us are aware, the NFA makes the possession of SBRs and SBSs legal only if the firearm is first registered with the federal government and also if you pay a $200 tax stamp. This Tennessee bill, however, seeks to strike out that entire requirement for its residents. It also removes the Class E felony charge that a resident would face if they possess an SBR and SBS without first meeting the NFA's requirements. So currently right now under Tennessee law, it is a felony to possess one of those firearms without actually complying with the NFA. But under this bill and under the change that it seeks to actually do, then it would actually be not a felony at all to possess it without complying with the NFA. The goal of this bill seems to be doing something similar to what other states have done with other NFA items like suppressors. However, one thing I wanna note with this Tennessee bill is that nowhere in it do you see provisions that prevent local law enforcement agencies or law enforcement and just in general from prosecuting residents who possess SBRs and SBSs in compliance with this new bill. So unlike other bills and laws that have passed in other states like Texas, this bill here in Tennessee does not have any language that says local law enforcement, local agencies cannot go after its residents if they are actually adhering to this bill. Also, I've seen some discussion that there is some other language within the Tennessee codes and laws that would allow state and prosecutors to charge residents with illegal possession of firearms under sections like 39-17-1307. Also important to note with all these types of bills is the fact that the ATF has also taken the position that despite these state level laws and bills and these actions, the ATF still has the ability to prosecute those state residents under federal law. As we saw with Texas in their suppressor freedom law, after they passed that bill and that law, the ATF sent a letter to all gun stores and all residents 
indicating that the ATF would still go after people for violating the NFA and GCA if they bought and possessed those Texas-made suppressors. There would no doubt be a similar response by the ATF if this bill or a similar one was ever signed into law. Now that the bill has passed the state House and Senate, it was signed by the Senate Speaker on April 28th. After the Speaker signs the enrolled copy, it is automatically transmitted to the governor for his uh, action. And that action by the governor is that he may sign the bill, veto it, or allow it to become law without his signature. The governor is allowed 10 days as Sunday's exempted after a bill is presented to him to approve or to veto the bill. If he takes no action within that period, the bill becomes a law without his signature. So by my count, the governor of Tennessee has until May 10th. So he has till May 10th to either sign this bill, veto it, or to do nothing at all. If it is signed, if there's no action by him also, then it will become law and will go into full force and effect on July 1st of this year, according to the bill language. Now, I wanna voice a little bit of caution for gun owners in Tennessee, similar to what I did with the Texas Suppressor Freedom Law when it was first passed. Just because this becomes law does not mean I would recommend you just start making SBRs and SBSs without going through the NFA's restrictions. Understand, like I said before, that the bill does not include a protection provision preventing local law enforcement from going after you and even more so, we know that the ATF will take the position that they will treat these types of firearms as in violation of the NFA if you don't actually go to register them or if you don't pay that tax stamp. Even more so, without the law enforcement prevention language that we've seen in other bills like in Texas, local law enforcement in Tennessee are not prevented from trying to assist the ATF in their prosecutions as well. So it's because it is lacking a lot of that prevention language that we've seen in other bills, local law enforcement could still try to go after individuals. So if it were me in Tennessee, I would not jump the gun. I would not think just because this is signed into law that it's good to go to just possess an SBR or an SBS without going through the NFA taxation and registration. I would wait until the inevitable lawsuits are resolved before I did anything. In my opinion, I think this bill could have been a little clearer in its writing and could have included more language to prevent state law enforcement cooperation. It could have also expressly prevented any other state charges under different state laws that might be out there. I would have also liked to see a mechanism in it similar to what Texas did with their suppressor freedom law, where the state attorney general can file a lawsuit on behalf of all of the residents upon request or interest in anyone seeking to own an SBR or an SBS under the bill in violation of maybe the NFA or the GCA. Texas included language that allowed the AG to sue the ATF on behalf of those residents, which they have now done in Texas. And I think it would have been a little bit cleaner if Tennessee would have done that as well. That type of language helps to streamline the legal process. It gives the AG standing to sue the ATF on behalf of the residents. But like I said, I think this is a good bill. It's not a perfect bill, but I always appreciate when states are taking matters into their own hands and fighting against this type of federal overreach that we see with the NFA and the GCA. Also, if you have any questions, go ahead and comment down below and I'll try to answer to the best of my ability. Also, if you like this video and like support the channel, one of the best ways to do that is to like, comment, and subscribe. All those things help to fuel the algorithm or fuel Algor's rhythm. It adds fuel to his jet and it signals to YouTube that you guys see value in these videos and in this type of two-way news. Again, I wanna thank everybody who likes, comments, subscribes, who hits the notification bell, who shares these videos. You guys are directly impacting these videos, impacting this channel, helping me to reach and educate more people than I could ever do on my own. So thank you so much for all of your support. So as always, thank you all for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And never forget, this nation was built by armed scholars and this nation will be maintained by armed scholars.